Hello, hello, and welcome on in to another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. And I'm Matt. Today we are minus Sarah, but I'm pretty sure she's pretty excited not to be drinking this guy. Uh, we are drinking Lafroig, uh, a single malt Isla whiskey. This is their 16-year-old. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for us. Lafroig. Somehow. We talked about last year's, but never done a review on Lafroig. This is the 16 year. So they were 15 and 18, both got discontinued. So the 16 is replacing kind of both of them for the moment. Gotcha. Lafroig is my love affair with Scotch. It's where I started with the 10 year, which we'll eventually cover at some point in time, an actual review of the 10 year, which I love. Lafroig, God's gift to Isla. Because Lafroig is freaking awesome. Not that I don't love Arbeck, because I obviously do. I love all Isla. Pretty much I dork out on all of Isla, because that's the person I am. So let's talk about Lefroy, because Lefroy is freaking awesome. So Donald and Alexander Johnson started a thousand acre farm in 1810. By 1850 they decided, what's more important, whiskey or cattle? Hell yes, whiskey, because whiskey more, makes more money, because it's important. So they found obviously more profitable. So then eventually Donald bought out Alexander, he moved to Australia, you know, whatever, whatever. Poor Donald, he died, he fell into a vat of whiskey in 1847. Well, I mean, there's way worse ways to die. You know, I mean... It probably if, really sucks. If I'm gonna go out, but you die in a vat of whiskey. That's a pretty great death. Eh. For as far as acting goes, it sucks you died. But Epic, as far as that bad news was, his kid was 11, so uh, oh. he ran out of the distillery at 11. So his uncle helped him uh, run it. So eventually, him and his cousin got together. They decided they were selling most of their whiskey as a blend to the blending houses. So there was these guys, the Mackey and Co. They decided they'd like to take over more of their business. And he decided, um, yeah, hell no. So what did the Mackey Co. do? Uh, they decided to dam up the uh, with stones their stream. So now they have no water. So not only can you not make whiskey without water, you also can't cool the distillery. Kind of important to make whiskey. Major problem. So eventually when he died, his sisters took over. They wanted to keep it a single malt themselves. So they sued these bulls over at Mackey. And thankfully, Mackie lost. Um, so then the stream, they were forced them to take, take the rocks out of the stream, and now they got their water back. So what Freud did is they took it, they made a reservoir of the stream, and they couldn't access it anymore. Smart guys. So what, what you don't know is Mackie owned Lagavulin. So what they did is they got together with Lagavulin, the head brewer at Lafroig with Lagavulin, had them make the exactly same still, same as Lafroig had. Magically doesn't make the same whiskey. Surprise, surprise, getting right with the cuts and, stuff, and all that good stuff. So, once they did that, um, they tried two more times to buy them. Well, eventually the lease was up on the land that Lefroy was on. So they told them they could buy it. They told Lef 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 tried to outbid Lefroy, and the owner told them they'd go pound sand. They weren't outbidding them no matter what or what, because they pretty much hated them, because they're jerks. But, you know, that's Lagavulin for you. So, don't get me long Lagavulin now, but, you know, this is back in the history. So, uh, eventually Ian Hunter took over and running the story in 1921. And this, so he took it over, so they decided to do some new malting methods and extra capacity now because it's on their own. He's going to have an orgasm over here. So anyway, um, he decided that he didn't trust anyone, and a lady named Bessie Williamson came into it, and she got a job there because her uncle happened to work at the time and said, hey, you need some summer help. Well, summer help turned into 40 years working there. So she worked there from 1932 to 1972, and eventually... When uh, Ian died, he left the distillery to her, all of it. He, all the secrets, he told no one but Bessie right. how to run the entire distillery, yeah. which is pretty, a pretty amazing guy. I remember that Lefroy was one of the first female-owned distilleries. Yeah, them and Ardbeg were both, Ardbeg, yeah, yeah. pretty amazing. But yeah, so she ran it for 40 years, and one of the things Ian did before he passed was after World War II, Sherry was very hard to come with new laws in Spain, very hard to go, so they, did, they switched over to ex-bourbon from America. So now today, they get all their bourbon barrels from Maker's Mark. Which is pretty cool. So she ran until 72, one of the first female owners, one of the first female distillers ever in Scotland. They eventually sold out to see to Seeger International, which filled a bunch of other people. Anyway, so the, of course they came back with a 10 year, which is in the best selling single malts in the world at this time, still is to this day. And one of the cool things they have, they also have a world warrant given to them by Prince Charles, as he loved Lefroig. And so that was very awesome, the first Isles to get a royal warrant. They also set up the Friends of Lefroy, which is where you can rent, which you'll find in most of these canisters, a one square foot of land that you get a lease on for life when you sign up online. So, as payment of your rent, when you, if you go to visit Lefroy every year, they give you one free dram of Lefroy. I think it's a pretty good deal. Can't say that for a free land. 
So, once I've done, they've coached since 2000, I've had lots more expressions since then. They got the quarter cast, the triple wood, the annual carcass, the, and then to celebrate 200 years, they released Lore. Which oh, that was so Magnificent. Cute. Which we will, of course, we will also review all of these at some point. And John Campbell is the current most distillery manager. So one of the other cool things, they uh, they use peat to smoke their barley and dry it out the bricks, which is still cut by hands, and they dry them for three months. They peat the barley prior to, to unlike most of us do it after. It takes 17 hours. They have seven stills, three wash, four spirit. They take the first low wines at 22% on the ABV, which they cut the run at 45, which is really late in the first cut. Then you don't take it again till, till it comes down to below 60%, so no, super late cut. They source, like I said, they source from Maker's Mark. So this, this is the 16 year. 48% ex bourbon only. They only made 900 cases for the whole world. Not very much. It's going to be part of the quarter lineup. Limited quantity every year. In Europe, you can only get this on Amazon.com, which is pretty amazing. A very few states will be getting this. So let's go in. I know Will's been hanging out with this whiskey, so we're in I've already nosed it. I've already tasted it. It is epic. Um, this mm. is Laphroaig every bit of the way through the nose and the palate. Uh. On the nose, uh, since we should start there first. Sorry to jump ahead of you. Oh, it's so good. Oh, on the nose, it is 100% malted barley. Uh, it mm. absolutely smells like used oak. It absolutely smells like it is heavily peated. Um, if Pete mm -hmm. is not your jam, this, this is, is not, not your jam. jam. Yeah. But if Pete is your jam, this smells every bit like Lafroy should smell. Yes, definitely. It's medicinal. It's seaweed. It's iodine. It's peat. Yeah. It's it's brine, smoke, it's salt. Brine. Yeah. You also got that oak char. You got a wet put out campfire vegetation. But behind all that, you've got your sweet fruits, yeah. vanillas, red berries. And some damp earth. And you got that butterscotch, that caramel, you yeah. know, a little bit of that vanilla. This mm. is beautiful, Freud. You guys so killing it. Mm. Oh. All right. It's a beautiful nose. Mm -hmm. mm. It's a beautiful palette, too. Oh, oh my goodness. It is rich. It is oily, it is viscous. Very different than other Laphroaigs, though. It's not nearly as iodine forward no, as, it's really not. as the tin is. Um, it's that more that wet wood, like soaked in seaweed and brine, mm -hmm. like wrapped up around it. It's like a boat was left in the water too long, and then the, the vines kind of grew around it, the, the moss and stuff grew on the boat, the light, the lichens, whatever the heck they're called. The lichens. Um... Some vanilla, some bonfire smoke, mm -hmm. some fro from like far away, some fresh ass and some citrus. A little bit of that meaty component, but not over dominant like Ardbeg gets. Mm -hmm. But not overly iodine like Laphroaig Tin gets. So this right. is a fun little... Mm. Second sip, more citrus, more lemon lime. And then you get quite a bit of that savory meat with the iodine in it, but some peat, some tropical fruits. It's very dense and thick. Yes. It's dry and sulfuric, like from a volcano. But the ending note for me is really like a wet cigarette, smoke and brine. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, there's a... The best price. There's a very it's smoky it. component to this for it's sure. It's very smoky, and price is not bad. It's like 80 bucks. It's not nice. bad. So, I mean, really and truly, because the old 18 used to be about the same price. I know it's two years less, but hey, the 18's not made anymore. I'm not disappointed with that price. And they're pricing themselves at the same price point as like uh, Log of Ulan 16. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, that's a good I mean, point. Yeah, so it's the right They price. have a 10 year old expression if you don't want to spend that much money. But, you know, priced at the same as Log of Ulan, I think this is every bit as complex as Log of Ulan 16. Mm. It's a different beverage altogether. It's not, you know, the same flavors. But. I'm going to grab the 10 just for. Because we should need the 10. We should compare. I mean, we should make comparisons. All right, so we're going to oh. pour a little bit of the Classic 10. Let's see what we think. Now, Classic 10 comes in at 43, so it is five points lower. The drop of water on the 16 brought down some of the proof spike. It brought down some of the 
peat and brought up the sweet notes. All of the sweeter notes, all of the butterscotches, the vanillas, the caramels got dialed up with a drop of water. All of the peaty, smoky um, carbons got dialed down with a drop of water. Yeah, this is much more rich, 16 compared to the regular 10. Yeah, and again, more, more of that band-aid, more of that iodine, yeah, more of that plastic, definitely. or um, what what Sarah would call a burning hospital. Um, it's it's the tin has a lot more of that going on than the sixteen does. Wow, that sixteen is really good. Wow, I love the tin. Mm -hmm. That is freaking delicious. I and am the tin is yummy. shocked how good that is. Wow, that's mm. good. I am, wow, I am ex that's exceptional. The 15's right behind me. Yeah, the, the 16 with the drop of water wow, uh, is quite a glorious trim. I really, really enjoy the heck out of that. The oils separate a little bit more. Mm. Um, I'm picking up a lot more of the sweet flavors that I really enjoy. I enjoy the proof spike that this one has over the tenure. Mm -hmm. The tenure is, is just kind of flat. Yeah. This one has a, a nice little spike in the mid palate. I really enjoyed the heck out of it. We gotta grab a 15. You gotta grab a 15 too, apparently. I got an empty glass right here. I can't not. I mean, if, it's, if this is a replacement, we gotta see. Now, granted, the 15 went away for a while, and the 15 uh, came out for the 200th anniversary. They brought it back out. Right. And the 18 went away. And then Forever 20, ago, too. 2016, I think, the 18 went away. Yeah. Thank God. Four years. It feels like forever. It does feel like forever. See, this is much sweeter. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Really good. A lot good. more butterscotch. A lot more this vanillas on the nose on this. This one's also 43, so... Hmm. Yeah, that's like way more butterscotch, like you said, on that, for sure. Yeah. Okay, the older 15 had a lot more butterscotch and caramel, mm -hmm. um, a lot less peat. Definitely. The 16 dials up the peat note substantially in comparison to Definitely. the 15. Um, that's freaking awesome. Yeah. I actually like this one better than the 15. I agree. I think this is actually a better product. I Especially too. if you're a huge fan of peat and Lafroy. Yeah. This stuff's the bomb. This stuff is great. Yeah, the new 16 is, is quite delicious. This is almost this is almost too sweet now compared to this. Compared to it, yeah. I freaking love this. So well, yeah. And I really enjoy sweet plus peat. I do too. That's my, my, my jam is uh peat that's been finished in sherry casks or th something like that. So I like sweet and peat, but I really am digging this uh new Lafroig sixteen. Wow. This is freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. If you dig the peat, you gotta dig the 16. Yeah. I yeah. know it's limited and it's gonna be in a release. If you can find one, buy the hell out of it. It's good stuff. You're gonna be super happy you find this. Yeah, if you're a peat head, this is uh, absolutely a pour for you. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Oh, so it's been a hell of a day. What a great day it's been here, the Whiskey Crusaders. Wow, I've done some damn good whiskeys today. Yes, we have. Ooh. I hope you have as well. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for us. And until next time, keep on crocheting for better whiskey in your glass. Cheers. Cheers.